Welcome back to another amazing episode of Tech Tuesday. It's your boy, the Cyber Warrior. This is Cyber Warrior Studios, and we got a big show planned, as always. So we're going through Chapter 16 of Linux Basics for Hackers, and I got to tell you, this is an interesting one because we're covering cron jobs, scheduling jobs, things like that. So your scripts and things that you want to start automatically or run at a regular basis. Now, keep in mind, going through Linux Basics for Hackers, we're gonna get a little bit of insight from what Occupy the Web said. There are often jobs, scripts, or other tasks that you want to run periodically. This is very true, whether you're a hacker, an administrator, whatever the case may be. We're covering Linux, but same thing applies in Windows. Scheduling jobs allows you to run tasks without having to think about it, and you can schedule jobs to run when you're not using your system, so you have plenty of free resources. So in this video today, right now, we will learn about the cron daemon and cron tab or cron tables to set up scripts to run automatically. Startup scripts will be discussed as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so here we are, as always, at our Kali Linux screen, right? So the first thing we want to do is open up our em term terminal emulator as usual. And because we're going to be messing with cron jobs and cron tabs and things like that, um, you can run a lot of these as user. Uh, and a lot of the things that you want to start, you generally want to start them as user, right? Your basic user. You don't want to give anything root permissions unless you absolutely have to. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to make our lives easy. So we're going to sudo su. And clear. all right. So the first thing we want to look at is actually what the cron table looks like. All right. So if we look at our cron table and we do vi etsy cron tab, I believe it is. Where is it? I have it here. Yeah, there it is. So vi etsy cron tab. And you have an example right here of what everything means. All right. So the very first field is going to be the time. What time does this all run? The next one is the hour that it runs, then the day of the month, then the month, and then the day of the week. And this is all in numerical notation, all right? So nothing should be done in terms of trying to type in a day, at least not initially, all right? There are going to be shortcuts we're gonna talk about later on to do things automatically uh, at a certain time every day. But let's say, for instance, we wanted to uh, create a backup job. Right, we wanted something that could just be done uh, every day or month or year, or whatever the case may be. Well, the first thing we want to do um, before we look at this is look at a different way to get into that. So you can do cron tab dash e, and what that what that's going to do is it's going to say, hey, what do you want to use as your editor? All right, so we're going to say vim basic. Whoops, helps if I have my number lock turned on, and that'll take us to here. Edit this file to introduce jobs by cron. So you can do it that way too. And then this will go in and you type in all your cron jobs there. But if we escape, quit, we didn't make any. So we're gonna go back to this one since we know what's here. And then we're gonna hit I, and we're gonna insert. So given that the very first field here is going to be the time that it runs or the minute, Let's say we wanted to run something at the top of every hour. So we do zero, zero. And then we want it the second hour of the day. So we're gonna do two, okay? And then let's go over here to this one. Actually, yeah. And then let's say we want it to be um, any day of the month. Then we want it uh, every month of the year, all right? Then finally, we want it as <coughs> on Sundays. Whoops. So understand this, this asterisk right here, and I hope you can see this. Yeah, barely, but you can see it. So this asterisk right here that we have is gonna be for um, any date of the, of the month. So day one through 31, it doesn't matter. That's the date. The next one, is every month of the year so no matter what the month is january or february march april may does not matter 
it is going to execute whatever script we put here. And then this zero is for Sunday. Your days of the week go zero through six. All right, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So there's seven days in a week, zero through six. So zero being Sunday. And then you can do Sunday equals zero or seven. Okay, so you can put a seven in there, but we're gonna use zero. It's easier to explain that way. And then what you would do is you would say, okay, I wanna execute this as the backup user. And then the, the, the script I'm gonna execute is gonna be bin slash system backup dot sh. So that would be, actually, let me scroll this up. Let me make sure you can see all this. I'm not saving this anyways. But, so you'd access, again, let's cover this one more time. So, zero minutes, so top of the hour, second hour of the day, any date of the month, so one through 31, any month of the year, January through December, and then on Sundays. And then we're gonna execute this as the backup user, and this is the command we're going to execute bin slash system backup dot sh now if we wanted to change that let's say we only wanted this on the 15th and the 30th of every year or every month my bad instead of year month then instead of saying on every date what we would do is we would do 15 comma 30 and that would say on the 15th and the 30th of every month go ahead and do a backup using this now, what if you wanted every weeknight? So you wanted days one through five, right? Monday through Friday. And you, because your 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 company is like, oh, I have to, we have to do this every day or every weekday, rather. Well, then instead of 15 through 30, you would still put an asterisk there, okay? And you would, of course, put one there, but then here is where it would change. Instead of zero for Sunday, you would do one through five. And what that would give you is Monday through Friday, starting at 11 o'clock at night, go ahead and do a backup. Execute this script. And that is how you would get every weeknight. And again, it's running as the backup user. You don't run these as the root user unless for some obscure reason you need to. The goal is to be that any cron job, any job you run should be run as the lowest level user, unless you're a hacker or trying to break into a system, then yes, you may want things to run as the root user. Everything has its purpose. So from an offensive perspective, yes, running things as the root user would make sense. Now, like I said before, there are built-in shortcuts to this, all right? And we could go through and we could set up um, our MySQL um, scanning script from before, but we're, because we're not saving this, I just wanna show you um, how this would work. One of the things you could do is instead of that, you could say at, um, what would it be, midnight, run this. And then every day at midnight or every night at midnight, it would run that script, every one. Or you could say at reboot. At reboot, anytime you rebooted your computer, it would run that script. At noon, at daily, there's a lot of them out. There's a few of them out there. You can do yearly. You can do annually, which are essentially the same thing. You can do monthly. So every month run that. There's weekly, uh, daily, uh, midnight we said, and then noon. Although noon doesn't seem to be working. So noon no longer exists. So as we discussed in the book, there are things that don't exist anymore. Noon is not one of them, but midnight does. And then of course, reboot as we showed earlier, that one works as well. So that's how you would adjust your, your cron table and put things in to start um, and, and run at certain times. Now, what if we wanted to run something at startup? So let's quit out of this and not save it. And you wanted something that every time you started your computer, it would just start, it would run. Well, that's where RC, RC scripts come into play. These are scripts that run when this, to set up the environment whenever you start your Linux system. When, when your kernel starts, 
it'll initiate init D or init. Then this will run the scripts found in Etsy. So slash we do cat slash Etsy init.d slash rc uh, no such file. So let's see cd uh, etsy init.d ll. Oh, we have a lot here, but we don't have rc, which is interesting. So we don't have an rc file anymore. That's all right. Does update dash rc.d exist? Yes, it does. So we can actually generate an rc file. So let's say for instance, we wanted Postgres. So let's say you're using Metasploit a lot, you're a pen tester or what have you, and you want your pro Postgres QL database to start. Then what you would do is, let's first see if it's running at all, which I'm gonna tell you it's not, but we're gonna look for it anyways. Postgres QL. And the only one there, and again, this is the same in the book, is the one, is just our search. It's just this grep looking for it. Okay, so what if we wanted to add it? What you would do is update dash RC and then Postgres QL defaults. Now, here's the way update dash RC works. You have update dash RC dash D help. So you have the base name or the script and then disable, enable, and the default. So the way it is explained um, in Linux Basics for Hackers is the way it would look is update dash rc dash dot d name of script or service and then remove defaults, disable, enable. And so those are the options you have for that script or service to actually start now. As we said, Postgres is not currently running. In order to get this to run, we have to reboot our system and see if it actually takes place and um, starts running. So let's take a look at that. Let's just do reboot. And as soon as this is done, I'll be right back with you. All right, everybody. Hey, uh, real quick, I had to edit this video um, because RC was not working right, which is part of the book that we're going through. So I'm gonna run you through it real quick, the commands, um, and we're going to cover how to get it all to work. But let's go ahead and get into it again. All right, so as I was saying, we were covering RC. This is how you get your startup scripts to work. Now, Kali 2022, without running any um, update RC commands, does not have the RC file there. It's unfortunate because there are some things that, well, should be there. But here's the thing, if you've never had a startup script, then it doesn't exist if you've never run update-RC. So, in order to get that file, which I'll show you that file now, ls etsy init.d. So this RC file, when I first started this recording, did not exist. All right, now it does because the command that I ran. So in order to get that file to generate and run, I had to use update, and then instead of disable, I used enable. Update-rc.d PostgreSQL enable is going to tell Postgres to start on startup. And I'm actually going to enable this because I wanted to start up all the time. There is this in serve error that you're going to get. And after some research, there's ways to fix it. I think it's the versioning of in serve that causes this. But um, don't quote me on that. Uh, you there, There's ways to fix it. Uh, I just haven't done so yet. Now I can disable this. And right now, Postgres is not going to be running. I can do ps aux and grep for it, ps aux and grep for it, but it's not running because I'd have to reboot my system to get it to run. All right. Now, here's the kicker in Linux Basics for Hackers, they're going to give you another way to enable this. What they're going to tell you to do and what Occupy the Web tells you to do, and it did work in older versions, I'm sure, of this book and of Linux, of Kali, is use defaults. That command will not work. I could put that in all day. It's not going to do anything. Now, I don't know why. I don't know what's changed. I haven't looked into it. I just know that that command failed for me. All right. And it's probably going to fail for you too if you're on Kali 2022. If it doesn't, please comment below and let me know. But the only one that works is enable. If you want to disable it, say you want a script or a service that you no longer want to, um, 
start when you reboot your system, you would do disable. Finally, there is another program which, after testing, I can't get the function. Again, comment below because it does not work the way the book says it should, and I haven't looked into why. But if you go to rcconf, which does not exist on your system right away, you have to install it, you get this GUI that tells things to start on boot up and what is supposed to start when your system starts, kind of like uh, msconfig for Windows. If you enable PostgreSQL through here or any of your other services from what I've noticed, this will not enable them. Try it. All right, so it says Postgres is starting on boot up because I already enabled it through the RC command. But if I were to disable it and run this, it will not work. I've tried it on several occasions. This is actually the third time I'm recording this because I messed up the last one but this will not work. So we're gonna hit cancel to get out of that. So the only way to get at Postgres to start on boot with the RC command is going to be update-rc.d postgresql enable. So I'm gonna boot this one more time or reboot this so that you can see that it actually come, to, so that it actually starts up for you. And after that, we'll be done. So I'll see you here in just a short bit. All right, I'm back. We rebooted our system, so let's take a look and see if Postgres is running. And there it is. So now every time we start restart our system, Postgres will run. Look, I know it's been uh, a rough episode. Uh, there were some things that worked, some things didn't work, and honestly, this has been the most edits I've put into an episode um, just because I messed up recordings and everything else, and I didn't feel like re-recording the entire thing. But anyways... Um, look, RCConf does not work the way the book says anymore. And if you can get it to work, please comment down below. Let me know. If you do update-rc.d with Postgres until it defaults, I haven't been able to get that to work either. So again, if you know why, comment down below and let me know. All right. There are some things I have not researched yet. I'm just going through the book. All right. So I'm showing you what works and what doesn't work by the way the book tells you to do things. But otherwise, I think it's been great. I've learned a lot. I've learned things that I didn't know before. So hopefully you learned something too. Otherwise, look, I'm the Cyber Warrior. This is Cyber Warrior Studios. And it's Tech Tuesday. If you like what I do, like, comment, subscribe down, by, down below. If you want to support the show, head to CyberWarriorStudios.com. All the links are in the description below as well so that you can buy merchandise like this amazing shirt right here. Buy me a coffee, well, a beer, or, you know, other ways that you can support. Plus, I have podcasts and everything else out. Please feel free. Share, like, comment, subscribe follow whatever everything I do and I guarantee you I got something for you so take care have a great evening or day or whatever it is for you and I'll see you all in the next one